It had been a long, hot day, just like every day in the sweltering dry season. And now a large, lumbering figure emerged from his canyon in the calm twilight. He is an Edmontonia, a large, heavily built tank of a dinosaur, made to defend against even the most ferocious of carnivores. In the quiet afternoon air, however, it is not predators he has to battle against. It is the elements and hunger. During the hottest part of the day, he can shelter under trees or retreat into the canyon, and at night he ventures out to feed and patrol his territory without the risk of overheating. But this year has been harder than most. The rains that signal the wet season starting should have arrived weeks ago. There is now precious little water to drink, and most of the food that is left is in tall trees, too high for any Edmontonia to reach. What's left are plants that are edible but very tough to digest and contain little in the way of nutrients or water. The male Edmontonia patrols his territory, nonetheless. He needs to keep other males out of it, for when the rains do come, the females will become receptive and ready to lay their eggs. So it was important that he patrols it regularly, even as his energy continues to deplete. It wasn't that long ago that this area was alive with activity, filled with countless dinosaurs come here to feed and drink. But that was during the wet season, and most had moved on following the rains. Some, like Edmontonia, remained all year, though he'd be lucky to run into any species larger than 30 centimetres. With the rains this late, everything was hunkering down or getting desperate. The male slowly made his way to the remains of a river, which was now just a few shallow puddles, and those puddles were filled with predators. Champsosaurus, a crocodile that looks vaguely like modern gharials. They are effectively trapped in these muddy pools, covering themselves in mud during the heat of the day and huddling together during the night. They see the heavily armored Edmontonia approaching and remain still. None of them would dare attack the herbivore. In fact, they don't even move for fear of provoking it. Not only are they far too small to attack it, but the Edmontonia is too well defended, and with his heavy armor, he meets no resistance when he reaches the pools and takes a drink. With his first slightly quenched from the muddy water, the Edmontonia continues his walk as the light fades away. Soon he comes across a female Edmontonia, However, she is not in a good way. Her stillness and lack of response to his approach indicates that she is sick, likely from the stagnant water that both have been drinking. There is nothing the male can do for her, so he leaves her to rest under the light of the full moon. The next morning, the male has become sick as well, and he knows it is best for him to remain in the canyon throughout night and day and try to recover. Far off in the distance, he can barely make out the edges of storm clouds, but they will not make it this far south. They are crossing the continent from east to west. There will be no rainfall this day, and so he closes his eyes for a long sleep. The next morning, the male awakes to an interesting sight. Flowing down the river comes the slow but steady movement of water. The rains from up north never arrive, but it has been slowly making its way south, steadily pushing away the breeze and filling the river just enough so that it was flowing again. The Edmontonia watched in satisfaction as the bare sand turned to a muddy trickle to a slow flowing river once again. When the water looked clear enough, he steadily made his way down and drank his fill. He was still ill, but with fresh water relieving his thirst, he would soon be back to patrolling. As he lay down, the Edmontonia found himself hoping the other herbivore species would arrive soon. Sure, he was usually solitary, but the prolonged drought had made him long for the time when food was plentiful and the forest was filled with the calls of different herds and ever-changing scenes as all sorts of dinosaurs would roll through. Those times would return soon. For now, he would rest and rise at sundown to patrol his territory.
Hello everyone and welcome back to the show. Today we will be breaking down another armoured herbivore, Edmontonia. Edmontonia was a large nodosaur from the late Cretaceous period that lived 71 million years ago in what is now North America. It was large, bulky and heavy, measuring up to 6.6 .6 metres long, 2.2 metres high and weighing up to 3 tonnes. Like other nodosaurs, its body was covered in thick armour, or osteoderms, for protection, with the thicker sections being at the neck and shoulders, and a line of spines running along its flank, and four larger ones coming off the shoulders, facing forward and outwards. These would have been excellent for self-defence against predators. In fact, they may have simply laid down and swung their tails when attacked, trying not to get flipped over onto their backs or they could have barged into predators to pierce them with their spikes. Another use could have been for males to fight one another over territory or mates. From the layout of the spines, I feel like they may have tried to get their shoulder spines under an opponent to lift him off the ground in a show of strength. Based on the many fossils that have been collected of Edmontonia across the US and Canada, it was clearly a very successful species, though I couldn't find much about whether it lived in herds or reared its young. Either way, it is clear that its large size and sturdy armour allowed it to thrive during this time, whether it had herds or not. Despite how much we know about Edmontonia, especially with quite a few well-preserved fossils, it doesn't seem to get much attention, which seems a shame because though nodosaurs and ankylosaurs are usually referred to as tanks, Edmontonia fits this description the most, I feel. It just looks like an old World War I era boxy tank, and that's why I like it. But what do you think of Edmontonia? Do you prefer the idea of it ramming into predators, or like me, find it more amusing to imagine it laying on the ground swinging its tail in annoyance? Let me know what lesser known dinosaur you'd like me to cover in a future episode. Until then, remember to try and be patient. Because just like our Edmontonia, the rains you need may be just around the corner.